Now, we come to the next important problem that is complications in a supracondylar fracture. Complications relate to classify them of immediate complication at the time of presentation to the casualty or to the orthopedic outpatient department, you have got to see for the immediate complications. Next, delayed complication. In immediate, what are the complications? Injury to nerves is the most important dreaded complication. Next, delayed complication. What are the delayed complications? Most common complication is mal union. In this, there are two types. One is varus deformity, valgus deformity. Varus deformity means anything around the elbow we prefix with cubitus, cubitus varus deformity. At the time of treating the fractures, when you try to put back the fragments in position, if your reduction is not good or it is not stable after you give the open reduction and apply the plaster pads, it is not stable, then the patient may develop with the either cubitus varus deformity or cubitus valgus deformity. If it is a valgus deformity in ladies or girls, it is not much of a problem because usually they have a more increased valgus or carrying angle when compared to the boys. So, if a boy has a very bad valgus deformity going like this, people will laugh at him, it becomes a ugly looking deformity. Second thing is opposite, what happens the entire thing becomes a varus deformity, that is when you are walking always walk, when you want to, when you extend the hand or the elbow, the actually the hand will go up to the umbilicus instead of being parallel to the lower limb, like it will be like this, to the more towards the center or axial part of the body and in valgus it is outside, outer side. So, these are the two complications, because this valgus malunion may result in delayed ulnar paralysis instead of delayed some people use the word tardy ulnar paralysis that is because ulnar nerve gets stretched in a deformity like this as you know the funny bone we call it you can get this sensation. So, what happens now as it goes from behind the elbow it gets stretched more and more over a period of time could be sometimes several years they develop gradual ulnar palsy and it looks like a little finger and ring finger will have a deformity, flexion deformity, this is known as delayed anal paralysis. And more than that, the main problem with these deformities is cosmetic. So, these people require what is known as osteotomy, corrective osteotomy with internal fixation. This means, suppose there is a malinated supracondylar fracture, the elbow, the humerus will be grown one side more, other side like this. So, the evenness of the condyles will not be there. So, because of that the entire hand looks projected. So, you will have to make a cut here and then take a little bit of bone. The first cut will be parallel to the thing and then like this take out this bone and once you close this, then we can fix it up. What happened then? It becomes normal and this is the bone that is removed to get this into position, proper position. For this, how much bone is to be removed is the next question. So, as kind of a small yardstick, what we do is for every 1 millimeter of deformity, we take 1 millimeter of bone. One degree of deformity, 1 mm of bone is to be removed. That is suppose there is about 15 degrees of excess deformity, you have got to do a 15 millimeters of bone, remove them and bring into position. So, this is the approximate guideline or some kind of a yardstick. These are the two complications, one is immediate complication as I already told about blood vessels and nerves and second thing is the mal union. And then Next late complication could be infection, it can be immediate infection, it can be immediate post operative following surgery patient may develop a immediate post operative infection or sometimes because the nature that if it is a compound fracture also patient may have infection. 
sometimes delayed infection also might be there. This nowadays infection is almost gone extinct because of the very good management and availability of antibiotics. So, infection is not much of a complication. Then not the other two important complications is one is myositis ossificans. Still lot of people are not able to reach the specialists in big cities or towns. So, these people go to the quacks where they try to do massage. So, post operative what happen? There is a fracture here. Sometimes usually if the gross deformity and all that, usually the patients come to us, but there is only a small incomplete fracture, undisplaced fracture, they do massage. When they do massage, what happen? Bone forms in front of the elbow. So, this acts more as a block, more suppose some kind of a block, bone block or a you can see even the doors also we have the block you know, so that the door will not get closed. So, such kind of a block may form and it is a very difficult complication to deal with. And after the myositis of ossification, one more thing that can happen is blood vessels can produce in addition to small immediate problem, they can be, they can produce what is known as Folkman's ischemic contracture. Next complication is Folkman's contracture, this contracture is due to gradual loss of blood supply to the muscles of the forearm and then the loss of blood supply next results in necrosis followed by replacement with fibrous tissue resulting in this contracture, wherein the patient comes after several weeks or months with a deformity like this. All the five fingers are contracted like this and sometimes even the skin also might be ulcerated or there may be little loss of skin. So, this is a very bad complication, one should not allow it to happen, that is why this elbow injuries people should know more and more especially among the children, because they are the morbidity is going to be so much that the entire life the child will have to suffer. So, here an important sign is known as Folkman's sign. The Folkman sign, the fingers which are like this, when you bend your wrist, like the gradually the fingers open up. The minute you try to dorsiflex the hand, they are going into deformity again. This is known as Folkman's sign. So, for this, what is that you have got to do? The best thing is prevention. Watch for this complication, and the minute you suspect it, you will have to open the forearm do release and any dead necrotic muscles are there, you excise those muscles, so that the fibrous tissue will not be that badly be forming after some time. So, this prevention. Next after that, when the patient comes to us with established things, you have got to do something. One is muscle sliding operation. Here, this muscle sliding operation, all entire muscular origin of the flexor muscles, we detach from their attachment and allow it to slide. So, that as the muscles relax, gradually the fingers open up like this. This can be done for mild type of contractures. If it is more severe, then we have got to reduce the length of the forearm bones. So, for that the easiest thing is to do a proximal row carpectomy. Sometimes A and B combinedly you will have to do it A plus B. The thing relatively is to see that the discrepancy between the muscles and the bone length is minimized. So, this what some of the things which are there. Fortunately, nowadays we do not see this complication. I have had experience in my earlier my early career, because I used to work in some of the smaller towns of my state, wherein people used to go in for all these things. And there are several cases I have done both muscle sliding operations and carpectomy. And mind you, with all those things, is more of cosmetic thing rather than functional effect. Because a fellow deformity like this, especially in a case, I mean area where leprosy is very, very endemic, 
people may even mistake it for leprosy. That's what they are worried. Sir, my son has hands has become like this. Everybody feels probably son is my child is suffering from leprosy, and that's why he has got the contractures. But those contractures are different. Typically, the work Folkman's sign will not be positive in any deformities or flexion deformities of the fingers and hands if it is non ischemic things. So, from this if the patient has got typical sign you have got to decide that it is Hochman's ischemic contracture and because the muscles are badly affected for a period of 2 to 3 weeks even though you try to correct it the function may not be that apparent it is more of cosmetic surgery rather than of functional use. Then supracondral fractures in adults, all the while I was talking the problem of supracondral fractures in children. In supracondral fractures of adults, the particular thing is either a T shaped, a Y shaped like this, there will be several fragments and here mainly they involve the articular surface, this may cause limitation of the elbow movement that is why one has to be very careful in treatment and here this is the regular y shape and inverted y also is there the limb comes from here and then fracture is there inverted y. So, here what you have got to do is most important thing is here you have got to get a perfect anatomical reduction that is why in treatment there is no compromise here necessarily we have got to open the fra fragments and then put them in such a position and we call it as exact anatomical reduction of fragments to rigid internal fixation. Rigid internal fixation by way of screws or screws and plates. Here also different varieties of plates are available, there is lot of plates which are available now which fits into the configuration of the bone and the fractures. So, here the specialist job, but because my aim is not to talk about more details of the fractures management in operation, so only to give broad look outlook of the management I am trying to give all this there minimum details. So, here once the fracture is reduced you can just put a screw even only if it is a small fracture here and ideal thing is Suppose there is a fracture here, you put them back into position, put a plate like this and fix it properly. The main fundamental principle is to reduce the fracture into exact anatomical situation and to fix them rigidly so that the fragments will not move. And third thing advantage of this operation is we can start mobilizing the patient after 2 weeks or sometimes even if you are sure about your rigid internal fixation, we can even start mobilizing the patient on the third or fourth operation day, so that the patient will not have any stiffness at the end. With this we come to the end of supracondrical fractures and their complications and management.